Ah yes, Matplotlib, the main plotting library in Python, the granddaddy of data visualization. But why does it feel like it's holding your data hostage behind cryptic syntax and a stack of indecipherable documentation? Look, Python is a fantastic ecosystem. It's like a Swiss army knife for developers. But Matplotlib? It's the knife that's always dull. You want to create a basic chart? Sure, Matplotlib's got your back. Want to do anything more complex? Buckle up, because it's gonna get wild. Matplotlib's still around though, kind of like a relic of the past. Why is it so unpythonic? Well, surprise! It's basically a copy of the MATLAB library, because, you know, that was the hot thing 20 years ago. It's all about minimizing transition costs, but not making sense for Python. So if you've ever thought this feels weird, it's because it is. But hey, it still has legacy users. Sure, you can make anything with Matplotlib if you're willing to wrestle with it. So why stick with Matplotlib? There's no need to keep banging your head against the wall with these five libraries. One, Plotly Interactive and Web Ready Visualization. Plotly is your go-to for highly interactive plots with minimal configuration. Take for example this Strata Scratch visualization question. You're asked to construct a bubble chart. This is the code you'll need to create that chart in Matplotlib. Now to get exactly the same chart, only looking nicer in Plotly, look at how much less code it requires. Unlike Matplotlib, which primarily focuses on static plots, Plotly enables zooming, hovering, and dynamic data exploration out of the box. It supports over 40 chart types and is optimized for dashboards and web applications. You can embed your visualizations directly into your web app using frameworks like Dash, while seamlessly handling large data sets with ease. Two, Seaborn, Matplotlib statistical extension. If you're already familiar with Matplotlib but find its syntax cumbersome, Seaborn might be a smoother alternative. Built on top of Matplotlib, Seaborn automates complex statistical plotting like regression lines, heat maps, and distribution plots. It simplifies Matplotlib's clunky API, offering predefined styles that make data visualization aesthetically pleasing right out of the box without manually tweaking every parameter. For example, compare the Seaborn distribution plot with the Matplotlib one shown above it. In Matplotlib, you get a plot that is quite incomprehensible. Also, you can't do anything with it, while in the Seaborn disk plot, you can get information about every data point. All that with significantly less coding. Three, Vega Altair, declarative grammar-based visualization. Vega Altair is a declarative visualization library for those who prioritize simplicity and scalability. Unlike imperative approaches like Matplotlib, Vega Altair uses a concise grammar of graphics model, allowing users to specify what to visualize and leaving the library to handle the underlying complexity. This makes Altair ideal for clean visualizations, especially in Jupyter notebooks, where complex charts are created with just a few lines of code. Compared with this Matplotlib scatterplot, the one in Vega Altair does look much better. It's also an exploratory visualization, where you can do stuff with it, unlike in Matplotlib. 4. Bokeh, web-optimized visualizations for large datasets. For web developers handling large datasets, Bokeh provides a powerful alternative. It allows you to create fully interactive, web-ready visualizations directly in the browser. Bokeh's architecture is more suited for complex layouts and interactive elements than Matplotlib, making it a top choice for dashboards. Though it requires a bit more configuration, the flexibility and integration with web technologies are well worth the effort. For example, I can install Bokeh and write this code for creating an interactive sine wave plot. Now I save the script and execute it using Bokeh's server. This will open the dashboard in my web browser where I can interact with it using the slider. And with Matplotlib, I can run this code in Jupyter, which returns a sine wave plot with a slider that doesn't Hmm, slide. Let's try the reworked code that uses the matplotlib widget magic command, which enables interactive widgets in Jupyter Notebooks. Still nothing. There's an error that calls for installing the IPML interactive matplotlib package. At this point, I'm close to giving up, but okay. After installing the package, I rerun the code and get this plot. Yeah, it seems it's interactive, but feels like it's much more trouble than in Bokeh to create it. And it still feels clunky compared to Bokeh. Five, plot nine, Python's answer to ggplot2. If you come from the R world and miss ggplot2, you'll love Plot 9. It brings the grammar of graphics into Python, making it easier for users to create complex statistical plots with simple declarative syntax. Unlike Matplotlib's verbose commands, Plot 9 allows you to layer plots in a more intuitive, elegant way ideal for users familiar with data science workflows in R. The video shows the layered plot in Plot9, 
than in Matplotlib. The one in Plot9 is more elegant and requires less verbose code to create it. Why struggle with Matplotlib's outdated verbose syntax when you can use Plotly for interactivity, Seaborn for beauty, Altair for simplicity, Bokeh for web-based data exploration, and Plot9 for an R-like experience in Python? Whether you're building a dashboard or running data analysis, these tools can save you time and frustration. Of course, if you prefer spending hours tweaking your plots, feel free to stick with Matplotlib. If this video helped you discover some awesome alternatives to Matplotlib, make sure to hit that subscribe button and follow our channel for more tips on Python, data science, and visualization. Don't forget to click the notification bell so you never miss out on our latest videos.